It's no secret, one of the large attributing factors to the success of Pokemon has been the animated television series. And standing right front and center of the spotlight is Ash Ketchum, one of the most iconic animated characters of our time. I'm not even playing this up. This guy and his electric mouse may single-handedly be the reason why we have any anime over here at all. You better not forget that you have this 10-year-old boy to thank for your VTuber girlfriend and the uh, anime body pillows. I mean, heck, when I was five years old, I wanted to be Ash Ketchum, as I dressed up as him with my Ash Ketchum posters and dreamed of having my very own Pikachu and setting off on a Pokemon journey. I mean, uh, I may have also wanted to be a Game Boy, but, but that doesn't make much sense. How, how would that work? That's a real-life object. I, I can't be that. But sadly, Ash's very own Pokemon journey as the main character for the last 25 years has came to an end after he's finally achieved his dream to become a Pokemon master. So, it's only fair I live out one of my oldest dreams and become Ash Ketchum, using only the Pokemon that he's acquired throughout the generations to become a Pokemon champion of our very own. <laughs> but the difference is, we're going to be using much rarer and more unique shiny versions of them along the way. I mean, let's not forget, even Ash himself has been known to catch a shiny. So let's pay an ode to Ash by Pika punching that like button and quick attacking this challenge head on. Ah! The Adventures of Ash Ketchum. He's traveled out through all the lands of the video games. Which one should we really play here? Well... How about, uh, all of them? Well, <laughs> not really. You see, I'm gonna capture a shiny Pokemon through all the generations, just as Ash did. As far as the main journey goes, we're, we're kind of stuck with a <laughs> brilliant diamond here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sucks. <laughs> but honestly, I don't really see what the big problem with these games are. I mean, even Pokemon Company looking at you guys thinking, Nah, huh? F you. That's what you asked for. We just we just gave it to you five years late. You don't want it? Okay. If this is on the 3DS, you guys f***ing love this. Also, it might be because it's one of the only Pokemon games we can send all of our shiny Pokemon to. Okay, all right? Sound good? Okay, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. What are you gonna do next? You gonna blame me for canceling Ash's journey too? I would never cancel anyone. Never mind the child. Well, unless he ran up and punched a defenseless loving animal or something like that. I don't think Ash Ketchum would do that. Brilliant Diamond is a true challenge to beat. She's not like your regular Pokemon game sister. And Cynthia won't just be defeated by, uh, you know, Thundershock alone. <laughs> this ain't Team Rocket Kid. But everyone knows Ash's very first Pokemon is Pikachu. So there's really no need to consider any of these game starters. Well... <laughs> For now, that is, of course. So we're gonna go as far back into the series as we can to capture a shiny Pikachu. And no game is better for this than the very first game that shinies were ever introduced. But, but, Pokemon Crystal, not, not Gold and Silver. You see, this game could be any more perfect. Because let me let you in on a little secret here in Pikachu's past. You see, Pikachu wasn't always Pikachu. You see, what I'm trying to say is, Ash's Pikachu used to do a legal substance. Don't be like Pikachu, kids. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It was tax evasion. Don't worry, you won't learn about that one in school. Pikachu wasn't always Pikachu, because in one of the more recent episodes, we found out that Ash's Pikachu was actually a little Pichu at one point. They can get away with this now, because Pichu exists. Totally not a thing when Ash first got Pikachu. Kind of rewriting Pokemon history here, like, What's next? Kangaskhan got the high ground? Cool little touch here with Pichu, as it was taken in by Kangaskhan. It shortly after it evolved from the friendship it had with her and her child. Can, can, can these things not have child? Does child ever grow up? That's the real stuff right there. Why am I even telling you this? Well, that's because I wanted to make sure to acknowledge this when we get our very first shiny Pikachu. By first, hatching a shiny Pichu. And this, surprisingly, only took 40 to 50 eggs, believe it or not. I only know this because I had to hand record each one like this. And this was all only made possible thanks to saving before the daycare man who gives us one and only odd egg that has a chance of hatching one of the new baby Pokemon of Generation 2 with a lot better shiny odds. I mean, even if Pichu was among the rarest ones, being shiny in one in every 100 eggs on average. <laughs> I know, if you're a shiny purist right now, you're thinking, only 100 eggs? Luckily, it didn't take 100 eggs, because it takes about 25 minutes just to hatch one. But what you don't know is getting it was only half the battle, because I also had to raise its friendship and evolve it before trading it over to Brilliant Diamond, because Ash didn't start with no Pichu. Generation 2 friendship mechanics kind of bad or well underdeveloped if we're being more if you want to be more suitable but if 
eventually we evolved it after eight more hours. Uh, I'm not even exaggerating. It was that bad. I'm making this probably the least efficient, but at least most canonical, you know, correct way to achieve our very niche challenge here. But there was one slight problem. The shiny Pichu that we got was a female. And although it might not matter here in Pokemon Crystal, or hell, not even in Ash's journey when he first started two decades ago. But you see, female Pikachus are clearly visibly present in the modern age. As you can see, he's indicated by a uh, missing a small piece on his tail here. Now it's shaped like a heart. You know what? Now I'm just gonna cover up with a little bit of marker and continue on our journey. But later I'm, I'm definitely gonna correct this very small inconsistency. And some may say it's, it's very unnecessary to do so. But for now, it's, it's okay for now, okay? It's it's okay. I gave this Pikachu the most anime appropriate moveset. I did it all just to find out. Oh no, Pokemon Home says F your moveset. What? You know, sounds great. Uh, I'm glad I wasted all my time. After beating all the trainers on the way to Jubilee Village with the greatest Pokemon partner ever know the anime plot armor on our side, I thought that would be the perfect time to add a new member to our team. As around this time in Ash's journey, he actually got a second Pokemon too, which <laughs> which was Caterpie. I wanted to deal with the heartbreak of I went for Bulbasaur instead. I could have hunted this in Fire Red or Leaf Green, but Ash didn't receive his Bulbasaur as a starter. He was too busy sleeping. I choose you! Maybe sort of caught it in the forest. I opt to catch it in the wild, and one of the only games this is even possible in is Let's Go Pikachu. After about, you know, six hours, give or take. And now we can check off two different generations of Pokemon games already before the, before the first gym leader. Catching each shiny Pokemon in different games has made it so that our Pokemon don't listen very well. Well, at least it could be more canon to Ash's uh, real story though, right? Right? Do I get imaginary points for that? I don't know. You, you, you let me know. At least when Pikachu eventually does listen, we are hitting pretty hard this early on, so there's that. For this reason, I try to keep Bulbasaur underneath level 10 for as long as possible. As I, uh, I guess level 10 is the point where Pokemon decide f*** you. For some reason, our, our rival Barry, totally not Gary, and totally subscribe, has the AI of a toaster, making it possible for our level 9 Bulbasaur to not only beat one Pokemon with type advantage, but two. Yeah, this guy's pretty bad. He's even got the same level as us. Like, come on! See, see Gary would never. Yeah, Gary would never let that slide right there. Eventually, we make it to the first gym. This gym battle was all up to RNG against Brock. Oh, sorry. Rourke. Our first attempt, believe it or not, much closer than I ever expected, as Bulbasaur listened not only once, but twice in a row. Even with Roar healing his Pokemon, which happens, you know, far too often in this game for some reason, Razor Leaf eventually takes out his Geodude. But of course, you know, Honest wouldn't go down this easily. Not only does he gonna outspeed us here, you know, Bulbasaur, you don't listen too good. And even when we eventually do hit it, it's, it's not enough to take it out. Knowing he's gonna heal it back up here, I go for Leech Seed, just so we can get some HP back. But the third rock throw nearly takes us out as he gets a crit. But we got a crit of our own right back at you. We don't receive any HP back now from, from Leech Seed. Yeah. Well, you would think on paper we'd be alright. We have two Pokemon to his one. We even have type advantage. <laughs> and the disadvantage. But to my surprise, Kranidos outspeeds and takes us out next turn with a headbutt. It's all up to Pikachu and his anime plot are... Oh. He's dead. And tried, and tried again. Never even getting close to our first attempt. RNG really took the wheel and drove us off a cliff here. Until finally we make it back to the exact same scenario of Pikachu... <coughs> Pika P versus Kranidos. In almost a fair battle here, as he, he must have left a few Legos on the ground. This time, Rock Smash lands, and we survive a Bulldoze with only 7 HP. Bulldoze does, however, drop our speed. Our Pikachu is fast as f boy. And finally, the anime plot armor kicks in, as we land a crit Rock Smash and secure our very first gym badge. And you may be thinking, isn't this a blessing? Won't the first gym badge make your Pokemon listen to your commands now? Oh no, no, that, that that's not the case. Not in these games. I think that only occurs here if after the maybe the third or second gym badge for some reason. <laughs> I have no idea why. We even had the absolute pleasure to partake in double battles where neither of our poopy pals you know, cared to listen. 
Just get hit in the face. Who am I to judge? If that's what you prefer, I guess. Also, around this point is where it became increasingly more annoying. You can't see the Bulbasaur evolution every level. As you see, Ash never evolved his. And I mean, I don't blame the kid. This thing's not my cup of joe either. The most surprising of this run so far is actually beating all of the Team Galactic members, including the infamous Rugly fight, with very minimal casualties. Although I, I did use Leech Seed and Sleep Powder to make it much easier. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do when you have two animals that just won't listen to you. It's not like I could just call up Caesar, the Pokemon Whisperer, to you know, fix all my misbehaving dogs. I mean, uh... Pocky monsters. We eventually make it out of the woods and see the old chateau there. Which I decide, how about we catch our next member of our team? I'm talking Gengar. Well, right now it's it's just it's just a ghastly, but you get the point. And only three hours is all it took for this completely full odds hunt, which is actually kind of remarkable, believe it or not. If you haven't noticed, I caught this one on my other brilliant diamond save. You know, hence the, the reflective construction jacket here. Ash ain't no fashion guy, but I know he wouldn't wear that. Also, I'm just gonna say it. Gengar shiny, one out of ten. I mean, even Ghastly and Haunters are much better. I'm talking the blue ball of gas. That, that's saying something, because they're nothing crazy themselves. But Ash never caught a Ghastly. Heck, he didn't even catch a Haunter. He went right for the Gengar. That's why I like your style, kid. So, of course, I had to do the exact same thing and mash catch him after all. So, we traded over our Gengar, and we're ready for the next gym. Not too bad, huh? Normally, I I'd agree with these circumstances. But here, it's, it's not that easy. First, we start off with Pikachu, as Ash himself would. Who, of course, still doesn't listen to us after two attempts of doing anything. Eventually landing two Iron Tails to take out the baby cherries. I do all that work. Some baby cherries. It's time for Ghost. Explanation mark. Who eventually listens and takes out her Turtwig with a hex, leading to her final Pokemon. And I've lost him many and many times before. I mean, we are asked to catch him, and we're, we're, we're a very relatable main character, obviously. You know, we gotta teach the kids that no one's perfect. No matter how many times you lose, it's all about how many times you get back up and never give up at the end of the day or episode. Or, or maybe TV series? I don't know. We start off landing a hex. She proceeds to paralyze us with a, with the stun spore. Paralyzing a ghost, huh? Not too sure how you did it. And I, I do have a few questions, but I respect it. But we also don't obey the next turn, and Gengar hits himself in his imaginary confusion. <laughs> That's great. You know, but somehow Gengar finds this as some pretty funny sh** as he decides to uh, fall asleep. Uh, Mid-battle here? Really? <laughs> what is this and why? Uh, I just can't do this. These kids aren't, these kids aren't listening to me. Uh, I, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I gotta leave this place. I, I want to be a ghost with no responsibilities. Uh, I can't take this. And this is absolutely a back and forth mess here. At one point, it just gets so bad that we're down to 3 HP. Or, you know, you just get a Gengar. It's easy after that. You know, no problem, they said. <laughs> Are you guys seeing this with your own eyes here? We get another Hex and save the day. Yay. If this was truly an Ash adventure, you know, I would get some badges out of uh, straight pity. Oh, and there we go. After two badges, it looks like Pokemon up to level 30 will listen to us, which is pretty good, even though Gengar won't listen to us for, for much longer now. I love that for us. I got another shiny team member, so maybe Gengar won't reach level 30 so quickly. With Squirtle! You see, this shiny, I'm not gonna lie, he's not really gonna be on our team for too long. I'm already getting tired of clicking B for, for Bulbasaur after every level, as Ash didn't evolve his Squirtle either. See? I got this Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Might have been the only way to get a Squirtle Squad. Squirtle. Even though it didn't really keep its glasses when traded over. But you know, he's just like the real Ash's Squirtle. He doesn't wear the glasses anymore, it's more canon this way. I headed to Legends Arceus. He caught us a shiny Turtwig. Which is nice, because we actually evolved this one all the way. Thanks, Ash, for actually training this one up. <laughs> and lastly, I added this Abomination. Before I can even use it though, it already evolved. <laughs> Not that I end up using this too often, to be honest with you guys. But we do need to use as many as Ash's Pokemon as we can, so that's why it's here. That's why it's shiny. And I already had this shiny from a previous game, so why not? You know what, at least Bayleaf's a little cooler, right? But the cool thing now is we're actually far enough that Pikachu can follow us, which makes it feel much more like Ash. I just need my skin Pikachu slippers and I'm fully there. I'm Ash! But the next gym is where we run into some real problems. Yet again, of course. You know, this wouldn't be easy after all, I, I am Ash. After many and many attempts, 
I realized Ash wouldn't just keep going back without changing his strategy. So that's exactly what I did. I opened up my heart gold, head butted some trees, and got myself a shiny hair across. Thanks to a cute charm glitch. Although this does mean I got another of those gender variant Pokemon that are not correct to the anime. Overall, shiny female hair across is much better since the pink actually makes it look like a heart horn. Now we have an answer for her Lucario. Nope, spoke too soon. No fighting moves. Thanks to Pokemon Home. You know, gotta, gotta, gotta love that thing. Isn't it the best? This was so bad, actually. I didn't even use Heracross. So much for changing this strategy to be like Ash. Who would know? All you need was a little bit of luck and crits on your side. Pretty easy stuff now, if I don't say so myself. Now is a good time to change up the team. You know, half of the team being grass or useless is, is really taking a toll on us strategically. Let's replace Bulbasaur with Trico. Oh, and the Bayleaf with our, with our Gibble. Gibble Icon Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. That game doesn't have any Pokemon Home support yet. So we just had to settle with one of my lousy Pokemon Go variants again. Being a Pokemon we can't evolve anyways, it's not going to be around too long regardless. Treat Go on the other hand, that's an addition we can use for the rest of this run. And it's speaking of run, look at this guy run. Look like he's about to save you 10% on car insurance. Hey, and since we're pretty far in this game at this point, it doesn't take very long until he evolves into Grovile. But you know, let me tell you this. They snapped on Heracross's follow animations. Damn, that girl be flapping them wings. See, I'm impressed very easily. But I'm more than certain now that we can handle Crasher Wake, the next gym leader for the, for the water gym with our newly formed team. And foolishly, he opens up with Gyarados. He doesn't know who I am or anything, you know. Ash Ketchum, I got the, I got the Pikachu. Ash Ketchum from Palatown? I'll only say it before every goddamn battle in the show or whenever I meet someone new. Ash Ketchum is really just that friend that shares just a little bit too much information. I'm Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town. I became a Pokemon master and my social security number is 2746. My IP address is 2321813023. But more importantly, the three digits on the back of my credit card are for 116. It goes without saying, Pikachu takes out Gyarados with a single Thunderbolt. Grovile takes out his Quagsire with a single Giga Drain. You know, just before being outsped and Ice Fanged it, it did, did, did by his Floatzel, leaving it all up to MV Pika P to take it out with yet another Thunderbolt, winning us the gym badge first try for, for once. Wow, I for sure thought he would at least have more Pokemon considering how smoothly that went, so I made sure to show off my shiny Gibble to a few trainers, as he possibly won't be in our team much longer. He keeps trying to evolve already, and I'm tired of that. Because after we talked to Mr. Corpse Face, was where I decided to catch us a shiny Dratini in Pokemon Scarlet. Again, you know, he can't transfer over, you know. You know, I, I thought it would, we, I would be able to by now, but I guess not. You may be thinking, Ash never had a Dratini. And to that, you might be right. But you know, we did have for like half of an episode was a dragon there right before he got Dragon Knight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bet you didn't know that one. Well, here he is. Our pink noodle dragon. Um... What? Did they just fully not animate this one? Is, is this what's happening here? Someone saw this and said, you know what? Yep, looks great. I, I want that guy's job. <laughs> We're really just gonna pull it along here as it floats? I mean, at this point, what do I expect? Anyways, it's time for the ghost gym, I guess. Am I alone on thinking that she had a goatee before it cut to the side shot here? Ghost? Explanation mark. Takes out her ghost hot air balloon. After only receiving, you know, fourth degree burns. Making her send out her totally not shiny Gengar. See? See, I told you. No real difference here. So, you know, my ghost being on fire. Very surprising is only one hex is enough to take it out? Like, like really? But I mean, at least her final Pokemon, Mistrevious, survives a hex just so that it can teleport into the Shadow Realm, leading me to switch into my Dragonair, who is uh, quickly sacrificed. But Gengar saves the day. Five gym badges down, and honestly, let's just go right into the next one. How about that? Yeah, no changes to the team. Screw it. Let's just go battle that thing, huh? And up first in the Steel Gym is Bronzor. Which again is just weak to ghost, explanation mark. Who not only sets up a trick room before dying, but also restores as I'm trying to sucker punch it in his big old blue dumb face. Or body, or snowflake. Oh seriously, what the f*** is this thing? Weirdly enough, he, he can't even stand the idea of losing it for some reason. Cause as I'm about to finally finish it off, he switches into Steelix. And he doesn't care too much for a shadow punch. Doesn't even phase him. Does, doesn't care. I go into Torterra to take it out with like three earthquakes. I don't know, it was probably enough to take out California if I'm being honest. See, Steelix just wasn't going down that easily. Of course, Bronzor is back and it <sighs> just, just won't go down. But we got it, you know, eventually. Leaving only Bastidon left. 
Ain't no matter how many times Heracross karate chopped this unfiltered fossil fuel, some of a he just wouldn't die. Heracross is out, leaving it up to ghosts. Explanation mark. Finish the job, which is, well, um, un Ash like of me, considering I didn't use a Pikachu Thunderbolt on this ground type. But Grovile finally evolves into Sceptile, one of the Pokemon of all time, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> Not so much the shiny eyes, though. If I'm being honest, those things creep me out. Some story related crime to stop, where Team Galactic are bombing the lakes to fish for Magikarp or whatever. I don't know, I'm Ash Ketchum, I don't really pay attention to storylines, I just come and save the day. Cause who cares? I sneak past all the fights until we make it to their boss. Sceptile, Ghost, and Pikachu deal with all of them easily, even though there seems to be no real reason to be fighting here, as by the time we show up, they've already got the lake spirits, and all the Magikarps has no water. Even knowing this, we still try to take them out on the other legs against poor ugly lady with the exact same results. And what, what good did this do? I guess we just found out what they were up to, I guess. More importantly, look at Sceptile's Naruto run. At least his animation works. Now it's time for the ice gym where it seems they either patch the, the ramp glitch out or I'm completely incompetent. You know, it's probably the latter. But I did pull this off last time I played the game. I, I, I swear, here, here, here it is. Guess we're up against canned ice. Don't worry, I'm not stupid. Because I, I'm not sure you can can ice without it just melting and becoming water. You won't fool me, canned ice. Heracross easily karate chops our snowbank Pokemon and ghost. Explanation mark. Puts a voodoo curse on that meta thick thighs. Pikachu on the other hand. I got no words, but it tried its goddamn best, okay? It's not Pikachu's fault that Sneasel dug underground. Heracross is able to take the dig and return the favor with a fourth time super effective brick break, leading into Pikachu's redemption arc. Well, uh, yeah, that, that was short lived. Heracross, brick break. We win. The world is saved yet again from canned ice. Yeah, I just I just can't believe it. You just can't can the ice. I don't think it's real. No shiny Pokemon to our team. In the form of the most famous shiny Pokemon that Ash has ever got. Or well, the only one he's ever got. I'm talking about your shiny Noctowl. And what better way to do this than to get it an X and Y? Alright, I, I would have been better to get in hard gold, but like let's be serious, we've already covered that. So X and Y seems seems great. It's only fitting that we walked around with it at night. This Pokemon was done right. Looks golden. You know what? Beautiful joke. I, I don't want to continue. How, how am I ever going to top that? I don't think I can, and I won't. I replaced Torterra on our team since Sceptile is more in line with conversations about Ash's best party members of all time. This is when we go on the long side quest of battling not Team Rocket for the last time because Corpse Face wants to make his own Minecraft realm and delete this world while he's at it. Just cause it ain't worth saving. This world ain't worth it, let's just make a new one. We defeat all of his grunts and team up with Barry, totally not Gary, but subscribe to beat his leaders or captains or whatever, honestly. Does it really matter at the end of the day? Does any of this matter? That just makes Corpse Face Man leader guy, well, angry and he stomps big mad towards us for the big battle of who gets to keep clifford the big blue steel time dimension dog waiting for a treat standing right behind him well of course we start off with pika p who at this point is obviously our best friend if you couldn't tell by the dance moves as an indicator getting a little boogie with it hitting the spongebob his honchcrow does however survive the power of friendship and thunderbolt but decides and i'm not kidding here when i say this to just fart in response to almost dying don't worry because pikachu doesn't give absolutely two f and just begs to be pet after being absolutely crop dusted even with the looney tune animation and all brings out gyarados for some reason just to find out it has a berry that makes it much stronger against thunder but you know what it can't be saved from? Power of friendship, God, and anime that is all on my side. As I survive a normally beyond lethal blow, Noctel then has his real claim to fame, taking out his Weavile after only two moon blasts, leaving only his Crobat, who we Shadow Ball out of this Minecraft server, and can claim the big blue steel dog for ourselves. But of course, first we gotta add a Pokemon to our team. Yeah, you, you can actually change your party up here, surprisingly. What Pokemon would be better for such a battle? than one that's came to Ash's saving whenever he's in real tough spots, even against some other legendary beasts. I'm talking about Charizard, but not any Charizard, the black Charizard, the rarest and most legendary. You know the kind that takes only about seven hours to capture? No big deal. Pokemon that iconic is definitely worth my time, right? Right guys, the, 
lizard would worth it, right? Please, please help me justify the seven hours spent. Why would we need Charizard to capture the big blue dog? Ash doesn't want to capture every legendary Pokemon, or even any legendary Pokemon he encounters. Most of the time, he just wants to battle it. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And we defeated it. it. Ash would be proud. This is almost as fun as the time I battled Jesus. Oh, and it was even here where I battled Jesus. Isn't that a coincidence? And with our new shiny power rails by our side, with totally working animations, but who would have guessed, you know, Charizard of all Pokemon's animations would work, huh? Almost like he's, you know, one of Game Freak's favor or something like that. It's time for the final gym battle, and a retelling of one of the most iconic Pokemon battles the anime has ever seen. I'm talking about Rat versus Mouse. Raichu versus Pikachu. And if you know anything about anime, you know who's gonna win. It's clearly Pikachu, cause it's faster. Oh, well, this is a little unexpected. Uh, no friendship, one HP, well, okay. Ghost, explanation mark, defeats what's left of Raichu, Octillery, and half of the Amipom before Charizard comes in and turns into a pile of ash. Oh, well, I mean, pile of ashes. Like, you know, burnt dust. It even avoids the lethal Thunder Fang to Inferno the Luxray, burning it so we can take it out next turn with a flamethrower and collect the final badge. I thought it would only make sense to fix something that, uh, we've been, uh, dealing with since the, the very beginning here. By catching ourselves a male Pikachu, of course. Funny enough, I had this one all along in my, my Pokemon Shield save that I transferred up from my, uh, my Pokemon X save, which may make it the very first shiny ever to get double transferred. Well... It is in, in, in this playthrough. It which actually happens to be one of my very first shiny Pokemon that I ever caught, like, like ever. Like, maybe, like, number five or number six, if I had to guess. Oh, no, our team's not completed yet. <laughs> no, no, not yet. We make our way through Victory Road with our longtime friends who have traveled through the many games to help us become champion. All of which their movesets have been completely f***ing destroyed by Pokemon Home in the process. And as I'm looking off into the beautiful world of the Sinnoh region, I can only wonder... What if we only had that one shiny Pokemon that got away? One that we set free many, many years ago. What if the hero throughout time came back? Oh, look, he's a butterfree. It's a, it's a shiny one. Came back all this way, all this time. Make sure this time it was with us when we become our champion. Yeah, well, uh, we we're sort of not really ready for that yet. Still need that, uh, that Dragonite. Kill the training montage! And finally, all is restored. No more, uh, animations, or lack thereof. Cause Dragonite is just a big old derpy green Charizard after all. It just uses up all of the same animations, of course. Who could really blame them? They're basically the same thing anyways. So let's go become Pokemon champions! Rival battle at the end here isn't much to, to really mention. It's the real challenge inside that we'll need to focus on. You know, first up we have Eren, and he must just really love the movie Bugs Life. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was the Ant movie. Either way, three Flare Blitz takes out most of his team, or at least his, uh, his first three pests. I tell Dragonite tags in and coordinates a Hurricane Strike on the Queen Bee, leaving only his final Pokemon, Drapion. Who, to this day, I, I have no idea what the hell this thing's supposed to be. How is it a bug? Where is it a bug? What is it at, at all, really? This is a big old slinky bug with arms. This thing ain't going down easily. And I'm no exterminator. I have no idea how to kill slinkies. I had no idea slinkies had this much fight in them. And we just nearly lose everyone in this fight. I tell Skeptile of all Pokemon, take it down. Leaving only four trainers between us in champion status. And next up is good old Bertha and her ground types. Yeah, I'm running out of steam here, so I'm going to be all business. No play on this one. You even see Sceptile's in there. And that thing don't like jokes. But it do like to do leaf blades that slice Quagsire in half easily. <laughs> and poor Wishcash, he totally thought he had a chance here. Even with his weakness berry, he has 0%. There's, there's no way, pal, you know, get out of my face. Our good old boy Dragonite is the most devious and illustrious surf on poor Soto Wudo. Bringing him back to his uh, PTSD of that time of getting squirted by water bottles by, by kids. And the same fate almost falls upon Golem. Wouldn't be that easy. Of course, had to have Sturdy to survive the hit. And uh, that, that's fine. Also, hitting the Stone Age too? No, f*** you. See, see, I'm, I'm a little betrayed. R RNG? I, I thought you were on our side. Leaving Sceptile to come in and save the day. Sorry, uh, hungry, hungry hippo. You just had no chance. 
I thought this fire clown with an afro wouldn't be too bad. Since now I have multiple Pokemon to surf. But who said he had that many fire Pokemon? Who said this game even had that many fire Pokemon? So it did prove slightly harder than I have ever expected. But we get the job done. Leaving only Lucian and Cynthia. This battle was absolutely bonkers, insano sicko mode style. Do, do I want to recap it? Mm, not really if, I, if I'm being honest. Kept clicking a lot of Pokemon moves. I did, did some good moves and some not so good, but eventually my moves and monsters, which is better than his. But now it's time for the ultimate battle. Ash Ketchum versus Cynthia. In no joke, one of the hardest champion battles in all of the Pokemon games. Specifically, this version. Since she not only has, you know, perfect IVs, EVs, natures, but also competitive held items. This is the real deal, Pocket Monster fans! So buckle in and get ready for the most epic of battles of all time. We beat it. We're champions. Yay. I'm just kidding. Back to the beginning. <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to admit this battle was two hours. I'm not even joking. Two hours of trial and error until I finally figured out there was only one reality where we could win. Because Cynthia's team counters ours so damn good. And some of our Pokemon moves are pretty dog shit. A lot of me was wishing I didn't take Butterfree for a bit <laughs> until I finally figured it out. Starting off this battle immediately with not one, not two, <laughs> not four, but five Quiver Dances. I have no idea how strong this makes this little butterfly. With the five quiver dances, we can now one-shot Spirit Tomb, Gastrodon, but not Melodic. I, I guess. Some runs, uh, I'm pretty sure I did one-shot the Melodic, but not here. Oh, isn't that, isn't that lucky, Cynthia? Isn't that lucky? That's great. Pikachu is up, and even though it does some serious damage, not even thunders are enough to beat this bulky beast of a woman fish. Leaving it up to Sceptile, who barely inches out the win here. Roserade versus our boy Charizard. And even though this looks like a pretty sh short tail win for Charizard, believe it or not, after two hours of battling Cynthia, nothing is for sure here. But when we do land a Flare Blitz, it does the job. Leaving her Lucario and Garchomp left. And Lucario wouldn't have been nearly that bad if it wasn't for her full restoring it, you know, every time it even gets remotely close to KO range here. Not to mention her completely bull crit, but Sceptile Drain Punch kills Lucario and it's only Garchomp left. <laughs> Only, I say. Garchomp is like 12 Pokemon wrapped up in one. Firstly, it outspeeds everything and anything I have by a long shot. Secondly, it hit one to two shot KOs every single Pokemon on our team. I am in no way proud and I feel oh so dirty. I had to abuse all of my Pokemon abilities and friendship just in order for her to heal it up time and time again until finally her Garchomp was paralyzed from Pikachu's static, admitting I had a sliver of a chance. To outspeed, Dragonite finally lands the final Dragon Rush, and we can finally call ourselves Pokemon Masters. Just like Ash did, I didn't really have the best Pokemon to work with. Well, clearly not thanks to Pokemon Home. But neither did Ash. Even his team was much better than ours. But Ash taught us that power alone is not what wins fights. But the connection you share with Pokemon. And after capturing all of our special shiny Pokemon across all the Pokemon games, I finally see what it means to be Ash Ketchum. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for this massive video. If you made it this far, feel free to check out some of my other videos. But most importantly, I've been R9, and I hope you had your a damn good time.